Let us pray. O oh God, where hearts are fearful and constricted, grant courage and hope. Where anxiety is infectious and widening, grant peace and reassurance. Where impossibilities close every door and window, grant imagination and resistance. Where distrust twists our thinking, grant healing and illumination. Where spirits are daunted and weakened, grant soaring wings and strengthened dreams. All these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. This morning's scripture reading comes to us from the Gospel according to John, the ninth chapter. St. John writes, Walking down the street, Jesus saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, causing him to be born blind? Jesus said, You are asking the wrong question. You are looking for someone to blame. There is no such cause and effect here. Look instead for what God can do. We need to be energetically at work for the one who sent me here, working while the sun shines. When night falls, the workday is over. For as long as I am in the world, there is plenty of light. I am the world's light. He said this and then spit in the dust made a clay paste with the saliva, rubbed the paste on the blind man's eyes, and said, Go, wash at the pool of Siloam. Siloam means sent. The man went and washed and saw. The Gospel of our Lord. For many of us, this past week has been a week like no other. Many of us, though not all of us, have been spending time at home, practicing social distancing, dealing with our new reality of the coronavirus. In this morning's Gospel reading from John, Jesus reminds us that when someone is sick, when there is a pandemic going on, finding someone to blame is a natural response, but it is not the correct response. During these times of health crises, it is not important to look to the past. It's important to focus on the present and look to the future. In Jesus' day, people believed that those who were sick, those who were deaf, those who were blind, those who were lame, got that way because of something they or their families did. They viewed illness as punishment. In the 21st century, we know illness is not punishment. Each and every person can become ill. It's how bacteria, it's how viruses work. Something like the coronavirus, it doesn't matter how wealthy you are, how poor you are, how educated or uneducated you are. Every person in our country, every person in our world, lacks immunity to this virus. We have an opportunity as a country to do something we've never done before, which is we all have a part to play in slowing the spread of this virus. You and me, when we practice social distancing, when we keep at least six feet from our neighbor, we're doing our part to protect the nurses, doctors, and other medical staff dealing with those of us most affected by the coronavirus and keeping the vulnerable people in our communities safe. The next several weeks will be full of challenges. Our freedoms may be restricted. We may not be able to come and go as we please, but Jesus reminds us that in the midst of our fear, in the midst of our anxiety, instead of looking for someone to blame, instead of looking backwards, start looking for what God can do in the midst of this crisis. Start looking for ways God is at work. Start looking for the light.
life of Jesus in the world. In the midst of our fear and anxiety this last week, we have seen countless examples of those shining the light of Jesus, of people putting up Christmas decorations to brighten the spirits of their neighbors, of children doing sidewalk chalk drawings to encourage those around them, of restaurants offering free meals to seniors and delivering food to nurses, doctors, and hospital staff that are working day and night in the midst of this epidemic. There are good things happening all around us. And as our fear and anxiety may build over the next several weeks, it's important to look for the light of God and to continue to ask, what can God do in the midst of this crisis? We will get through this crisis together. It's important for us to constantly be looking for Jesus' light in the midst of our anxieties and fear. In Jesus' name we say, Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for bringing us here together. We thank you for the opportunity to hear your word, to support one another. God, in the days ahead, I ask that you grant each of us the spirit of compassion. I ask that you send your spirit among us to equip us to reach out to those who may feel isolated. God, we give thanks for the medical professionals in our country and throughout the world who are working around the clock to care for those suffering from the coronavirus. God, we ask that you keep our doctors, nurses, and other medical professionals safe. God, we ask that you mobilize the resources of our country so that we can start producing the equipment that our hospital staff so desperately needs so that they can stay safe, they can stay well in the midst of this epidemic so that they can continue to serve us. God, we ask that you grant our politicians with the gift of wisdom so that they make the necessary choices to help us deal with this virus today and help us move on from this situation as soon as possible. God, we pray for all those who are struggling before this new virus became a reality in our lives. We ask that you continue to send your compassion among our homeless brothers and sisters, among those who were already suffering food insecurity before our economy basically shut down. God, we ask that you be with all those struggling with other illnesses. Especially, we lift up your servant, Wes, this morning, as he continues to battle illness. We ask that you bring your comfort and peace into West's life and into the life of his spouse, Diane. Continue to strengthen Wes and Diane in these days. God, we ask that you be with our congregation, all faith communities around the world, who are attempting to do church, worship, in new ways. And we ask that as we continue to practice social distancing, you continue to find ways to connect us digitally. All this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.